Hello everybody, welcome to the new tutorials for Premiere Pro 2017. These updates just came out in uh, early November and we're going to start going through all these tutorials on 2017. Uh, a lot of these things have kind of stayed, stayed similar. There's some uh, really nice changes that have happened to Premiere that we will eventually go through. But for this one we are uh, starting off from scratch here and we're going to start from the beginning. Uh, so we're going to open up Premiere here and I'm going to be talking about using Premiere on both a PC and a Mac. Uh, uh, you can use either operating system. Most of the commands are fairly similar. I'll uh, we'll be kind of going between both uh, both OSs to show this, but for for now uh, we're on the PC. So I'm going to hit my Windows key and uh, my Start key, and type in Premiere and start up to uh, Premiere 2017. Now, the beginning of the when you start up Premiere, it will first bring up what's this, what is called a splash screen here. The splash screen uh, will bring up a few little items here. If you're paying for Creative Cloud files, you have this Creative Cloud files little section right here. You can uh, purchase them or you can share them and you can use them. I'm not really going to get into that in too much in detail. We're going to go through the basic functionality of the actual software here. Uh, under Recent, you'll bring open uh, recent projects that you've had open. Sync settings, if you have a login, uh, which you should for Creative Cloud, you'll be able to uh, do changes on things like keyboard shortcuts and timeline layouts, uh, sequence layouts, things like that, that you will be able to sync to the Creative Cloud server. And you'll be able to, if you open that up on a different uh, machine, you'll be able to sync your server. Say you have a PC and a Mac, you'll be able to go between the two and sync your settings from computer to computer. Once you have a login, once you've done some settings, you can just hit say sync settings now and it will save it to the server, uh, the Creative Cloud server, and you'll be able to update it on other computers that you're on. So under here, you'll also be able to create a new project. If you're working on a new project, you'll be able to open project and it will navigate to a window where you can open up a specific project. If you have a project that you're bringing, bringing from uh, Premiere Pro 2015 or earlier, it will, if you open up a project, it will ask you to update a project. Here's an example. If we open up, here's uh, the earlier version. It'll bring this up and say, do you want to, what, what, what do you want to save the new project file as? Uh, since these are significant changes, this will need to upgrade to the new project and, uh, and it will convert it. But you can uh, rename it. I usually add the words, or I usually add 2017 or something just to imply or show that this is a new project file, uh, not the earlier version. One thing they've added in the new uh, 2017 updates is this new team project, an open team project. Uh, you do have to get their enterprise edition right now, and uh, so I'm not going to be going over this right away, but I will have uh, up updates once I go through this whole process with a, a team project. I will come on and have a tutorial on this in the, in the future, so I'll look forward to that. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to open up a recent project. So I'm going to go to recent, and I'm going to open up a project that uh, has been getting worked on. Now that the project is open here, what I'm going to go in this episode, I'm going to be covering the basic settings to get your project all set up uh, under preferences here. We're going to go under edit, preferences, and we're going to look at the panels under preferences here. First of all, I'm just going to click on general. This will open up, this will bring up all those things, all those uh, preferences that you saw under the edit tab here, uh, all in one big window here. And I'm just going to cover some of the basics here so you know what you need to do to kind of get things going on your project here, on, on a project. And I'm not going to cover all of this stuff, but we're going to go through the basics here, some of the basics that are really important to set up a project. A couple of things I usually change inside of Premiere here. First of all, right here, at playback and return to beginning when start, restarting playback. So if that is checkmarked, this is what happens. When you get to the end of a timeline... So yeah, I could definitely sit on Walmart for the rest of my life. When it sits, when it, when it hits the end of the timeline here and you press play again, it goes to the beginning of the timeline and starts began... playing again. Uh, so it just depends on if you want that to start at the beginning or not, uh, but that can be changed just by simply unchecking that right there. Another thing that I really don't like on, and this is once again a personal preference, is play the work area after rendering a preview. So whenever you play a, um, whenever you render a clip, it just automatically starts playing it when it's done. I usually uncheck that and leave that off. This is fairly important right here. Default scale to frame size. When you import new footage and the timeline is going to be a different resolution than the items that you're importing, this will automatically, anything that you import when this is checkmarked, will add this feature to all imported footage that you've, that you've brought in since it's been checked. Mark. And then you, as you add them in the timeline, see you've got 4K footage you're going to be dropping into a 1920 by 1080 timeline, about half the resolution. It will scale it down to fit into the 1920 by 1080 timeline. And vice versa, if it's 1920 by 1080, it will upscale it uh, to the larger format. Otherwise, when you drop it into a timeline and you start editing, you're going to have to 
uh, you're going to have to manually scale it to the frame size. So I usually, before I start a project, I just make sure this is always checkmarked. Moving on to appearance, some things you have here. Under appearance, you can change the brightness of your screen. As you pull this up and down, you can see if you like it darker or lighter. You can have a highlight color. You can change your uh, you can change your color here. You can change your interactive control, uh, if whether you want it darker or lighter. And same as the focus indicators as well. You can just I usually have these on default, but if you, there's something you like a little bit more than uh, if you like this lighter or darker, you can change those under the appearance. So one really important thing under audio here, if you're kind of missing this, sometimes your play audio while scrubbing might be unchecked. Uh, so the audio thing, probably the most important, one of the most important things in here that I really like to have check marked is play audio while scrubbing. If you have that check marked, and as you play through audio, if you grab your play head and move it, you'll hear your audio. If you're not hearing any audio when you're scrubbing here, then you'll just have to make sure that that is check marked. This is important under audio hardware here. There's some basic settings, and these ones work pretty well, but. We're going to go to audio hardware, and there's some things that you can change under audio hardware if you're working with different uh, interface devices. If you have something uh, plugged in like a Zoom recorder that you're trying to access audio from to record into Premiere, or if you want your, um, or if you have some sort of interface device that you have for your speakers, like an Avid interface or some other sort of uh, hardware that you have plugged in uh, via. Um, uh, Firewire or USB, you can tell it to use those as your spe as your output speakers. Auto save is fairly important. Premiere has it automatically set to save every 15 minutes. Now, uh, I, I kind of don't like that because 15 minutes when you're, you're in the mode of editing and you're doing a lot of editing, 15 minutes of work can be a lot of work uh, that you might miss out on if, if the machine crashes. So I usually set this for about like two minutes. I'll have an update every two minutes. Uh, it will actually add a new file, and you can tell it maximum project versions. You can have this do like 50 or more if you want. Uh, that way you have a whole bunch of different versions of save files. Every two minutes it saves a new project file. Uh, it doesn't save over your, over your original, but it saves it into a folder. You can even have check mark this and have it save that backup project to Creative Cloud. If your machine crashes then, and your hard drive dies, then you do have a backup project that saves under the Creative Cloud. Capture, I'm not even going to cover Capture right now there's, unless there's any specific questions on that in the future. I might show one, because uh, this is capturing from tape or from uh, from uh, analog tape or from digital tape if you have to have the hardware to do that. Uh, sometimes you have to do it through a firewire depending on what system you're using. This is fairly outdated. Control surface, if you have something like a tangent element board, you can add that to your to your control surface here and you can control Premiere through with it with a control surface such as the tangent element panel. Device control, if you're capturing, you're going to be using that for how to control what type of signal you're controlling your uh, your DV or HDV device with. Moving on down to media, this is fairly important under here because when Premiere starts and you start importing footage, it's going to start saving things such as waveforms, it's going to create metadata based on all your clips uh, that it's going to reference or, and create thumbnails and a whole bunch of other things that, that help aid you in editing. Now, if you save your project, uh, this is fairly, we've had a lot of questions on this, if, if you're saving a project and you move from a computer to another computer, you'll see that all your audio waveforms get rebuilt and this information, the thumbnails and everything get rebuilt. You can tell this to save instead of on your actual computer. If you're working on an external hard drive, I recommend put this in the same folder that you're working out of on your hard drive. Like this project is under my interviews project, so I'm going to put interview editing and I'm going to select this folder and save it. But the only thing that's kind of a pain in the butt with this is you have to do it every single project. So it's saved for that project. Some people just ignore this. They're working on a single computer. Uh, if you're going to be swapping computers, uh, when you do this, it might ask the media cache that's already created. Do you want to move it to the new location or delete it? I'm just going to move it and it will move it all in the new heart to my new folder. And everything's all that information is going to be saved under my new folder. So just a little suggestion. You don't have to do this if you're if you're not changing computers, but if you are going to be changing computers, Computers, this is fairly helpful that you don't have to wait for it, if, especially if you have a large project. It doesn't have to wait forever to rebuild all those files. It will, they'll be already built on the hard drive in that folder that you're working off of. Playback is good here for a couple different things. En enabling a Mercury Transmit to playback. This is using your video card to playback your video files off of it. It will speed things up a bit. If that's not checkmarked, I would recommend checkmarking it so it uses your video card. And right here, this is nice for full screen. If you have a secondary monitor, uh, right now I have two monitors plugged into my system. I'm only recording one, so you're only seeing one. If you checkmark your monitor, whatever monitor you want to use as your full screen uh, video device, you can checkmark this under playback and it will send a full screen 
image of your of your timeline or your source clips uh, back to this monitor and it acts like a, an actual video monitor. I'm going to uncheck that right now. Uh, if you're doing it through DV, which once again this is antiquated, very ancient, so this is hardly used anymore. It sends it through a DV signal through a camera that, or through a digital device or a mini DV deck that can be sent to a um, usually a standard definition monitor. Project locking is a new feature they've added to 2017. If you enable this, it will add a little text file next to the project that makes this project locked. Every time you open a project that's been locked, if you're opening it from a different computer, it will not allow you to change that project. It has the username of the person who's accessed it, and uh, this is very helpful if you're working on a big group project. It shows if it's um, being used and, to, and does not allow changes made to it unless this is unchecked. Okay, the other thing we're going to cover here is uh, we went over preferences here and kind of went over some of the basic preferences to get your project set up. I'm going to go into File. Another thing you would need to be aware of to get your projects ready to go is Project Settings. Under Project Settings, I'm going to go to General. This brings, once again brings open that entire tab with all three settings that you saw. Under General, first of all, you have uh, your renderer. This is uh, what accelerates your playback. If you're just using the software only uh, on the computer, this is basically using your processor in your computer to uh, playback video and process effects, and it does not do a very good job of doing it real time. If you have a supported video card, you'll be able to do Mercury Playback Engine GPU, which uses your graphic processor, uses your basic your, your video card to accelerate effects and uh, playback uh, video effects, color correction, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, so if you can, if you have this option, make sure that that is selected. If you don't have this, if this is grayed out. I'd recommend update your video drivers. If you update your video drivers for your video card, that usually will open this up. You have to close Premiere, update them, reopen Premiere, and sometimes even a machine re uh, a computer restart will do that and open up this option. Video format, usually want to display time code. If you're doing things in film, like film format, sometimes uh, you can do feet and frames if, you want to see if, you're, if you're actually uh, transferring film to video, and you can display it by frames as well. Most common here is just displaying by time code. Audio, so under audio, this is just a display right here. If you want to uh, display your audio information as audio samples or milliseconds, uh, your captures, once again, is pretty much antiquated. Uh, this is a DV or HDV, so that's uh, pretty, that's, Unless you're capturing off these old ca ca um, FireWire cameras, this is pretty obsolete. Scratch disk. This is fairly important right here. This, if you're capturing video and audio, once again, this is fairly antiquated. I keep saying that. I know that, but yes, this is. This is uh, fairly obsolete in my opinion. Uh, unless you're using those old DV cameras. Video previews. Uh, when it builds new video files, if if you render effects and you render um, the, any effects and color correction that you apply to your clips, it'll render it onto this. Panel. Path. And sometimes people want to change these here. You want to change these and put it to your hard drive. So once again, if you switch computers, this is saved on the hard drive, the external hard drive that you're using. So I'd recommend putting them in the same folder as the project just for that project. Once again, it's a little bit of setup that you got to get through. But once it's done, it's done for that project. Uh, audio previews as well. I'll set up for the same folder and uh, auto save. Now this is kind of important because this is saving on this actual computer and I'm working off an external hard drive. If you're working on an external hard, hard drive and uh, you're auto saving to that same hard drive, if that hard drive crashes and you have a backup of the footage, your auto save files are also gone as well. So I'd recommend putting your auto save, just some recommendations, putting your auto save on the computer that you're working on and putting everything else on the hard drive that you're working on. And also back up your footage, whatever footage you have. That kind of the old saying that I've heard many times is, if you don't have three copies, it doesn't exist. So once you have a project you're working on, back it up in three different physical locations. So you have it. If one hard drive crashes, you'll have a backup of your project files on your computer, and then you can, or on or on the Creative Cloud if you want to save it there. Then you can go back to another hard drive, grab that footage, and restore your project with the project file that you've been working from. So usually the autosave I leave on my computer and these items, the previews I put on my on the hard drive that, or in the folder that I'm working out of for that specific project. Under ingest settings, this is really cool. This is something they added just uh, late 2015 uh, settings here that they had, which was actually 2016, uh, is ingest, the ingest button and your proxy uh, button here. We will have an episode specifically on this because this is really cool. If you stick a solid state drive in, you're able to have a copy. You can start editing right off the solid state immediately and it starts copying it over to your hard drive. And you can also do, instead of copy, you got transcode. If you're work, trying to work in one format like ProRes or um, an app 
Avid format, you can have it transcode all your footage to that same codec, which will speed things up a bit once it's done the transcoding. Create proxies is really nice if you're using it in the days of uh, 4K and above 4K, 5K, 6K footage and all and up to 8K. Creating proxies is really necessary to be able to edit on a machine that doesn't have the speed to keep up with that all that information. And like I said, we've got a future episode coming that will talk specifically about workflow for doing proxies and making things easy. Adding uh, ingest presets is going to be specifically relating to just the proxy, the whole proxy workflow. Those are the basic settings and preferences that we have. Our next episode, we're going to do a quick little overview on our keyboard shortcuts. In the following episode, we'll be getting into a basic project setup. So if you could, subscribe to my channel, which is uh, youtube.com slash chinfat. And if you go to my channel, you can visit playlists. And under playlists, you'll see all the tutorials that I have that are nicely organized into these little sections so you can quickly navigate, find the ones that you want to, or just go through the full tutorials for the software, or After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, and a bunch of other things. So if you have any questions, please post them, subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you.